Hello everyone and welcome. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and I have a bit of a problem. I like the herbaceous plants a little too much. I'm always looking down and I miss a lot of what's going on up above. In fact, today's episode is dedicated to that. We'll be looking at trees and it's spring here in the Northern Hemisphere and trees are doing some incredible things. So with any luck, in this neighborhood, we're gonna see some interesting species. Let's go see what we can find. Here's a good place to start. This is a service berry, and it's a great front yard tree to have because look at the display it's putting on. Now this is related to the apples, and as you can tell by how showy these fruits are, this is adopting an insect pollination strategy. And indeed, despite the cold nights, there's plenty of things buzzing around, getting a sip of nectar and collecting pollen. Now in a few short weeks, provided pollinators have done their job, this will produce lots of fruits that the birds absolutely relish. It's a hardy species and an excellent landscape tree. Such a charming plant. Now these are the blooms of a Normae maple, and I have to admit, I don't really like this species. Much of the year I can't stand the appearance of it. but. When it comes time to flower, it is rather attractive. Now, unlike the native maples, these produce larger, showier flowers that I think attract a lot more insects, and they kind of smell like honey. Now, I think there's plenty of other trees native to your region that are a much better choice for landscaping than the Norway maple, but in the meantime, while it's flowering, I guess I can stop and enjoy it. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that it's all about angiosperms here at Indefensive Plants. The gymnosperms are blooming as well, although, of course, it's not flowers. These are cones. This is a male tree. It's a red cedar. And many of you are probably cursing this tree right now because of the prodigious amount of pollen that it produces. It's wind pollinated. And because of that, they don't have that mediating effect of a pollinator taking pollen directly to a female ovule. Instead, they have to produce millions upon millions of pollen grains to spread them out into the wind and hope that a few of them inevitably end up at a female plant. Red cedars are dioecious. This is a male tree. There's probably females scattered around this neighborhood, but nonetheless, these structures are neat. If you get up close and look at them real closely here, you can see they are in fact cones. It's worth doing with a hand lens, provided you don't suffer too much from pollen allergies. these flowers are really neat. They kind of have this chandelier-like appearance. Like the cedar we just saw, these two are wind pollinated and then these dangling male blooms disperse pollen on the slightest breeze. Now you'll notice that a lot of these trees are flowering before they even produce leaves and it makes a lot of sense because if you rely on wind, leaves only get in the way. So they get everything done before their leaf buds are fully broken open and these have a chance to come out and expand. Now, there are female flowers on this tree, although they're kind of hard to see. They're less conspicuous than these male flowers. They're tucked back in in the axles of the leaf buds, probably much higher up. The other interesting aspect of this is that you'll still see a lot of bees visiting these flowers. Because they're wind pollinated and because they produce so much pollen, it is an excellent energy-rich food source for bees early on in the spring when not a lot else is blooming. It's a lovely thing. They're not overly showy, but you kind of have to work to appreciate them and I just love that about those types of flowers. To me, the real rock stars of the spring flowering trees are the magnolias. Check out this bloom. They're large and they're ancient. Magnolias evolved long before bees ever came onto the scene. As such, their flowers evolved to attract other types of pollinators like beetles. To begin with, look at these petals. They're not actually petals. They're undifferentiated bracts called tepals. Inside the flower, we see laminar stamens and a hard fused carpel that houses the ovules. Now these are very tough because the beetles actually chew on them as they look for pollen, but inevitably they end up pollinating the plant in the process. They're a beautiful family of trees and one that really adds life to any landscape. And there's as many variations on the theme as you can possibly think of. It is a gorgeous family of plants. 